now is our annual symposium for the One Health concept. Each year we invite international experts from, um, uh, from for international uh, organizations sorry, to enlighten us about the One World concept and its burning issues. And this year we welcome Didier Cheux from Santé Publique France, Karima Wally from the FAO and Maria Zabo from the OIE. And they will introduce us a little on the missions of their organizations on managing emerging diseases uh, in our globalized world. I thank you for your attention and I will uh, let the desk to uh, Didier Cheux. I'll be watching the time, don't worry. And let's So thank you very much. I just would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and I will present you the, the role of Santé Publique France uh, which is a national agency for public health surveillance. Uh, if you don't know exactly what Santé Publique France is, uh, Santé Publique France was created in April 2016, and it results in the merging of French Institute for Public Health Surveillance, ENVS, the French Institute for Health Promotion and Health Education, INPES, and the Establishment for Public Health Emergency Preparedness and Response, EPRUS. And our mission are to collect information and to perform the epidemiological observation and the monitoring of population health status. Uh, we also monitor health risk threatening population. We do health promotion and health risk reduction. And we develop the prevention and some activities uh, concerning health education. And considering emerging infectious disease, of course, we are involved in the preparedness and response to threats, alert and health crisis. So maybe we can begin the presentation by defining uh, what is an EID, EID for emerging infectious disease. Um, for us, EID can be considered uh, for each infectious event or for each event suspected to be from infectious origin affecting man, animal, or animal and man. Uh, we consider that there are three different types of emerging situation. Uh, the first, when you have a new clinical disease, a new clinical entity, for example, it was the SARS outbreak in 2002, um, you have a new disease that, and no case have been diagnosed before. Uh, this, is, this can happen when you have a new exposure between man or animal, or between men and a new environment. Uh, this can also happen when you, you have a new capacity to diagnose and isolate a virus or a bacteria. For example, Legionellosis was uh, isolated in 1976 in Philadelphia, and before uh, Legionella was not known. So you, you had an, an emerging disease at that time. Another situation is the increasing incidence. For example, uh, we had an outbreak of chikungunya in the Reunion Island in 2006. Chikungunya virus was already known. Uh, uh, some outbreaks have occurred in Africa uh, before, but when the virus was introduced in the Reunion Island, everything was uh, in favor of the outbreak. Um, the population was susceptible to the virus, the, uh, the mosquitoes were prevalent in the island, uh, and the mosquito was completely compatible with the life cycle of the virus. And so the, the disease was not a new disease, but we had an increasing incidence at that time. And the third category of uh, emerging infectious disease, uh, when you have a change of the characteristics of the pathogen, of the disease, of the affected population, or of the, uh, or of the environment, you can have an emerging, uh, an emerging infectious disease. Uh, antimicrobial resistance is a good example for that kind of emerging uh, infection. If you look at uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, it's not a new disease, uh, but the emergence of MDR and XDR tuberculosis strains is due to uh, the lack of uh, organization in our health structure. When you look at the timeline of the emerging infection since 1980, you can see that quite every year we have a new emerging infection. 
Uh, and some of these infections are still very important in, public health, uh, in a public health perspective, both for men and for animals. If we look at the red circles, uh, in 1976 you have the discovery of Legionnaire's disease and Ebola viruses. In 1983, the HIV. In 1985, the ESB or the BSE. Uh, in 1997, the avian influenza uh, H H5N1 virus, the SARS coronavirus were identified in 2002, the MERS coronavirus were identified in 2012, the Schmallenberg virus in 2011, and more recently you had the Zika, Zika virus and the Ebola virus. And when you look at that map, you have the same uh, emerging viruses or bacteria, and you can see that the, the, the identification of uh, these emerging infectious diseases are located everywhere in the world. So you, you should not consider that some part of the world are more or less at risk uh, regarding infectious disease. If we remember the SARS outbreak in 2002, the first cases were identified in November, in November 2002 in Guangdong, in China. Uh, the WHO has issued an international alert on March. The virus was identified on April, and in May, more than 6,000 cases were identified in Asia, but also in Europe and in North America. So when, when you look at this, at, this, at this slide, and more if you look at this one, you can understand the spread of the disease and the spread of the virus. Uh, on that slide, you have a 24-hour simulation of international air traffic and you can rapidly understand that if you have a case in China in the morning, you will have a secondary, a secondary case in, uh, in, in North Africa uh, in, in the late evening. Uh, so no border for the infectious disease and particularly for uh, emerging infectious disease. Just that slide to remember that emerging infectious disease are very important if we are looking at the costs. Uh, the, the yellow circle, you can see the, the cost generated by the SARS outbreak in 2002. It's more than $40 billion. And I think it's very important to have these costs in mind because when we are discussing with the health authority before the emerging infectious disease, we have to discuss about the costs of the hospital organization, we have to discuss about the cost of the preparedness, we have to discuss about the cost of the lab capacity, and it's always important to have this cost in mind. So now I will try to explain you the, the role and the mission of Santé Publique France regarding emerging infectious disease. Uh, as I said before, our mission is to protect the health of the population, and for that uh, we are in charge uh, of organizing the surveillance. Uh, by organizing the surveillance, we can collect information and data. Uh, through this data, we can describe any situation. Uh, thanks to this description of the situation, we can alert all the, the public health authorities, and then we contribute to the public health measures. If we look at the, the two cases of emerging infectious disease, uh, the increasing incidence or a newly diagnosed or described uh, disease, uh, we are in a case of public health emergency, we have to react very quickly. Uh, first of all, we have to organize uh, the surveillance system. Based on the surveillance system, we have to contribute to the risk assessment, and the risk assessment and the description of the situation will help us to suggest and to evaluate public health measures. And the objective is always to avoid introduction of a new disease, of a new emerging infectious disease, and if the disease is discovered in front, we have to mitigate the diffusion. On the other situation, when you have uh, quantitative or qualitative changes of the pathogens, the disease, the affected population, etc., you have more time. But the objectives are the same. You have to collect information and to suggest public health measures. Uh, another role of uh, my organization is to try to anticipate any change that can lead to an emerging infectious disease. And probably that is one of the most difficult things to do. So once uh, you have detected an, an emerging infection, you have to organize a surveillance uh, in order to detect very early uh, all the cases. Uh, the first step is to have a case definition. It's not always easy. You have 
to define the possible case, probable case, confirmed case, excluded case, and sometimes, and particularly if you have an emerging situation, you do not know what is the clinical presentation, you do not know uh, what is the pathogen in, in, in relation to, to the situation, you do not know the at-risk population, you do not know the at-risk exposure, so sometimes it's very difficult to, to have a case definition. And you always have to to, to be very careful to the balance between sensibility and specificity. Uh, once you have the case definition, you have to organize all the transmission of the information, all the transmission of the sample collection between all the partners. And at the beginning of uh, a, a, an emerging situation, it's very important to really have a good communication between all the partners and the stakeholders. And everyone should be able to respond to that question, who should tell what, or who should send uh, what, uh, to whom, when, how, and, how, and, and why. Uh, another important issue is to have a lab capacity 24 hours a day and seven days a week all over the, the, the territory. Uh, and in France, it's particularly difficult with the overseas territories. And at last, uh, we must collect the data, we must gather uh, knowledges, and every time we must update everything. We must change our surveillance system as often as necessary. If we look at the MERS co coronavirus surveillance, at the beginning, the case definition with the incubation period had defined that uh, the incubation period was a, a, the time be about two to ten days after the exposure. But we, have, we had a, a, a confirmed cases, for a, a confirmed case for, for whom the, the incubation period was um, um, between 10 and 14 days. And based on this situation, WHO has decided to revise the case definition. So you have always to update your information, the data, the analyze, the risk assessment, etc. We also have to facilitate research activity by providing the good data to, re to the research uh, team in charge of modelization, in charge of clinical research. And of course, uh, you must if possible, uh, limit the loss of chance for the patient. Uh, when we had to face the Ebola out outbreak, every possible case had to be hospitalized uh, in a hospital of reference, and sometimes it's very difficult to transport the patient from the, the place of diagnosis to the place of isolation. So if, if you can, it, you, you must be very careful not to introduce loss of chance for the patients. On that slide, you can see the, the importance uh, in avoiding the first chain of transmission. In, in the first uh, figure, uh, you have the, the, the epidemic curve in case where nothing is done. There, you can see that the number of cases uh, that can be avoided is very limited. But if you are able to detect the, ca the first case very earlier, if you can reduce the delay between the detection, the investigation, the confirmation of the outbreak or uh, the confirmation of the emerging situation, then the response will become very earlier and the number of cases that can be avoided is much more important and you have a real impact on the future of the epidemics. Uh, looking at the, the MERS coronavirus outbreak, you can see that in South Korea, we had a situation where the first case was not detected very earlier. The first case, case in the red circle, uh, has generated only three secondary cases. But at the final, uh, some weeks later, you have the tree of transmission. We had uh, about 200 cases and 36 deaths. So that slide shows you the importance of the early detection of case, and you should cut the first transmission uh, tree um, very, very quickly. So let's have a look now to the MERS coronavirus uh, outbreak. The first cases were detected in, in Jordan in, November two to, in, in, um, in April 2012. As you can see on the, on the um, uh, message from ECDC, uh, most of the affected are said to be healthcare workers. And in fact, we had uh, seven nurses and a doctor who were involved in this outbreak. But at that time, we, have, uh, we had no information about the pathogen. Six months later, we receive a, mes a message through the PROMED 
system, which is a system uh, to gather information about infectious disease in the world. Uh, and this me message uh, related uh, a new human coronavirus isolated from a patient coming from Saudi Arabia. Three days later, we are in September, the 20th, three days later, it was a Sunday, a very sunny Sunday, uh, we received uh, another message from the EWRS, the Early Warning and Response System from um, ECDC and the European Commission. And again, this, me this message stated that a novel coronavirus infection was detected from a patient coming from Saudi Arabia, and the analysis revealed that the two viruses were, were very similar. It was a Sunday. So on Monday, WHO and ECDC uh, organized a, a conference call with all the country of uh, Europe. In the same day, the ECDC published the first risk assessment, and ECDC and WHO were asking countries to organize a surveillance. In the rapid risk assessment, we had only few information about the case definition. The lab capacity was very, not, not very organized at that time. Uh, and three days later, uh, there was a publication in uh, Eurosurveillance uh, made by the team of Rotterdam, uh, by Ron Fouchier, who they give all the methods for the diagnosis of the new coronavirus. And the first week of October, the French National Reference Center was able to perform the diagnosis of this new infection. During the same time, at Santé Publique France, we were in charge of organizing the surveillance. So we have to develop the fact sheet for all the partners, the clinician, the biologist in charge of the patient, to tell them how they have to diagnose the case, what are the samples they have to take, where they have to send the sample, what to do in case of a detection of a new case, what are the criteria for the notification, etc. And you can see on that slide uh, the number of suspected possible and confirmed case that we had in France. In red, you can see we had only two confirmed cases of MERS coronavirus, six months after the alert issued by WHO. And when we, we talk about sensibility and specificity of the case definition, you can see on that slide that our definition was very sensible but not very specific. That is a global situation of MERS coronavirus. Uh, all the cases were coming from, majority of the cases were coming from Saudi Arabia, and you have the, the outbreak in South Korea in, in red. So some word about the organization in France for uh, the response to emerging infection. Uh, Public Health France, so Santé Publique France, can benefit from 15 local offices which are located in the different regions of France where you have epidemiologists, they can uh, collect the data, investigate the case, they can uh, suggest local um, uh, public health measure. It is very important for the clinician, for the biologist to have locally some epidemiologists to work with. If we look at the organization uh, for the care of the patient, on that slide you have the 12 reference centers uh, that are located in the north of France. You can see that in the south of France you have only three hospitals uh, that can accept patients who are suspected to, to have the emerging infection. Uh, these hospitals are highly secured for the isolation of the patient, uh, they have a uh, highly secured laboratory uh, and the team are, are specifically trained for uh, emerging infection. And you can see the problem if you, uh, uh, if you are diagnosed in Tulle, for example, dans la Creuse, it would be very difficult for you to be transported to Bordeaux or to Lyon. Uh, I, I remember what we were talking about, about the loss of chance. If the patient needs surgery, for example, you have to balance between the case and the population. And that is always difficult to do so. And sometimes we have some conference call in the, in the night to decide what to do with the patient. And at last, of course, we need the microbiological support. Uh, we have uh, about 40 
uh, national reference center located all over the, 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 the country. And all these national reference center specifically dedicated to human health have collaboration with the, with the National Reference Center in charge of animal health. They have collaboration, they can exchange strains, they can exchange uh, techniques uh, for, of diagnosis, they have joint meeting to, um, to be able to, to respond to an emerging infection that will affect both human and animal. So what is the key message of the, of the presentation? Do you see the cat? Imagine you are a mouse, you are in the forest, and you have to decide what to do. All the pieces of food are potentially dangerous, you have to analyze the situation, you have a lot of information from the environment, you have to analyze, you have to evaluate the risk for you, and you have to decide what to do. Should I stay? Should I go? For your information, the cat is there. Trust me, that was a cat. But the cat is sleeping, so there is no danger. And in our situation, we, we are a cat. It's exactly the same. We do receive a lot of information, uh, a lot of data from a lot of partners. And we have first to verify the reliability of this information, the quality of the information, the relevance of the information, before launching an alert, we have to be specific and sensible in our analysis. And then based on all the information, based on all the analysis we can do, we have to perform the risk assessment. And to do so, we need a strong network for surveillance and we need a strong expert network that will help us to do the risk assessment. And at last, as I said before, our um, analysis must be always update. The objective of our work is to provide the health authority and the decision makers with the good information at the good time. And sometimes it's very difficult. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you have some questions, maybe I have a working mic. Okay. If you have some questions for Mr. Didier, sure. I have a mic working. No, no question. <laughs> if you don't have any questions, we'll go on. No questions? No? The students? Uh, Hi. So uh, you say that in your surveillance you need to be both sensitive and um, uh, specific to detect the disease. But maybe it wouldn't be best to be more sensitive than specific, though that way you can act soon before, instead of waiting to see a laboratory confirm, and then all of a sudden you have this whole epidemic as you explained. At the beginning of the emerging infection situation, we have to be sensible. It's not possible for us to fail a case, mm -hmm. so we have to be very sensible. It's not a problem if we, have, if we have no specific definition. As you can see on the slide about the situation in France, this one. As you can see, we were not very specific. We, ha we had a lot of excluded case because they, respond not, they do not respond to the case definition. We had a lot of possible case. We need to be sampled and analyzed, and all were negative. Uh, and at the beginning of the emerging situation, we need to be very sensitive. Mm 